وموفون بعهدهم إذا عهدوا and who keep their promises and their pledges once they have been made. And so in when all we hit on this particular thing, if anybody makes a pledge to mines, if you do not keep it, then you do not have bir, you don't have virtue. Because those who have it, they keep the pledges and promises that they make. Sabar is an aspect of the bed. This is the act of things that we do. Are patient when there are difficulties and trials, hardships, and times of difficulty. You know, there's the betse and the hina bed. Something can happen, a, a hardship, a difficulty, it's a one time thing, and then you will go through times. Hina bed. Like, Periods and you know, like it says in Surah Al Baqarah, when it says that the Prophet and those with him went through so much until the Prophet and those with him said, When is the help of Allah going to come? And Allah answers, That the help of Allah is very close. So we, you know, we'll go through extended periods of time. But understand that this has happened before. And when the Prophet ﷺ was asked who will be tested the most, he said the Prophets. After them, those who are close to them, and then it goes down, down, down. So when you find yourself being tested, then it is because Allah is developing the strength that He knows you have. But it must be developed. So this is also is a uh, uh, the sabr in these uh, in, during these times. وَلَيْكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيْكَ هُمْ الْمُتَّقُونَ They are the ones who are truthful and they are uh, the ones who guard themselves. They have guard themselves. So we have these categories of bir. Bir first. The first aspect is the belief, the iman. The next thing is this: is this uh, bringing the wealth and using it for all the categories that Allah Taala has mentioned, and then the active ibadah, you know, the the, the things, the, the salat, the zakat, the sabr, and um, to endure whatever Allah sends to us, because nothing can happen to us except Qadr Allah, whatever Allah has written for us. Then this is this so this is from Surah Al-Baqarah. When you move to Surah Al-Ali Imran, there is an important ayah. Allah Ta'ala says, لا تنالوا البر لا تنالوا البر حتى تنفقون مما تحبون You will not attain this bir. You will not attain virtue. You will not attain righteousness until you spend of that which you love. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٍ And whatever you spend of anything, know that, be aware that Allah knows about it. So, we know what righteous, we know what the bir is, because Allah has defined it in ayatul bir, but then Allah Ta'ala says, you can't get there until you spend of that which you love. Not what you want to throw away, not which is of no use to you anymore, not which is not important to you, but that which you love. No matter which category, if it's the clothes, don't wait until they get so bad. If you have new clothes and you have three or four things, that you have one that you can give away, it's still good, maybe brand new, might still have the tags on it. You loved it, that's why you got it. And you see someone else who is in need, give it to them. You have shoes, I have I was in Sudan, subhanAllah, and I was tutoring a Korean woman. And you know, in other countries, they don't live with the excess that we do. Now, I went from America to Sudan, and I had shoes. And when she came to my house, she looked at my shoes and she said, how many pairs of shoes do you need? And I was so ashamed. I was so ashamed, really. And I, and I hadn't taken off my shoes. I had shoes at home. So, you know, I, I, was, I felt so bad and I realized, you know, this is true. We live with
with abundance and excess, but we don't think about it. So the thing is, don't wait till the shoes start to get, you know, holes or the leather starts to tear and you think, okay, now I can give them away, I don't need them. No, you give of that which you love. Believe me, I, I gave away some stuff. And I still try to do that. But we still have more than we need. Your time, because it's not always about material time. You might love to do something with your time. You might have a favorite show, or you might have a, a thing you like to do with her. But maybe there's something else going on. Take some of your time that you love to do enjoyable things and give it to a charity. Spend that time serving food to people down at one of the shelters or helping to pack uh, um, you know, the, the, the neat the bags that have like comb and brush and soap and something. Give up that which you love, not that which you decided to like, you know, what used to have of this anymore. And Allah says, and whatever you give, that he, he knows it for sure. So when we are involved in doing good, and particularly in giving, this is something that is loved because it is an essential part of our deen, part of Islam. And deen, I don't know how many people, you know, where I didn't know this for a long time, but deen comes from a verb then, meaning to uh, be in debt. You're in debt, D-E-B-T, debt. Because Allah Ta'ala owns everything and it's loaned to us, so we are in debt to Allah. And Yamuddin, one brother I heard him say, he says the day when the payment is due, you know, on your debt, and you will find out whether you have anything in your account or not. You know. So giving is part of our deen, and this giving, this um, giving voluntarily, giving willingly, and giving of that which we love, we see that we cannot have complete faith and um, until we're willing to do that, because this is part of the bill. And so Allah Ta'ala has defined it, and He said we cannot reach it until we give up that which we love. And the Prophet said that our faith, we don't really believe until we love and desire for our brother and sister what we love for ourselves. Again, being willing to give up that which we love so that someone else can have. Even our homes. You know, when you travel, when you really go around the world, you see people live in a lot smaller spaces than we do. But this is coming, you know, now you've seen these 300 foot homes, I mean 300 square foot homes, not 300, but 300 square foot homes. Um, a little tiny, looks like a dollhouse or a shed or something, but people actually have living area, sleeping area, kitchen, bathroom, in these little tiny things. And you sometimes they're on wheels too, you can move. Um, but we have a lot of space, and even if you just invite someone in for a meal, or, you know, if you can find a way to do, there's an organization here in Baltimore called Paul's Place, which I really admire because they, they have a facility, they let people come in and take a shower and give them a clean set of clothes to put on, you know, just to help people keep their dignity. They don't live there, they don't, they, they don't house people, but they do provide soap, water, and clean clothes so that people can you know, have some human dignity. So from the Quran and the Hadith of our Prophet we realize that we must be active in trying to improve the condition of humanity in order to have righteousness in our character because we don't have bir, we don't have virtue, we don't have true righteousness until we are involved actively in helping others. We have to be and slow. So the theme of the evening is a night of helping to build lives. And Allah has made life sacred. Every life is sacred. And he has entrusted human beings to parents. Children are entrusted to their parents. And he has entrusted human beings to communities. The Ummah is supposed to be a place that will care for an individual, see to the needs of an individual, 
and help that individual to reach what Allah wants them to reach. To create a womb, a communal womb, for the development of the human soul. We are responsible for each other. And what does it take then to be a helper of humanity? What does it take for us to look out with love to the others, to act with love, to spend out of love? And Allah says, hubbi." We take our wealth, seeking the love of Allah, and go out and show that we have a heart for others. The first thing Allah Ta'ala said, it's Iman. We have to build a relationship with Allah. We have, to under, we have to understand who we are as servants of Allah and build a relationship with Allah Ta'ala. Because we don't do anything without divine enablement. We don't do anything unless Allah has enabled us to do it. And Allah Ta'ala has told us that the help, the real, the source of help is Allah. We're just, we're just agents, khalafa, successors, acting on behalf of. In the nas from in Allah, the help comes from Allah. And if He gave us something, He gave us more than, than what we actually need, then we have enough to give. The principle in Islam even related to food. Food for one is food for two. And you can take that as high as you want. If you have food for 100, you have food for 200. If you have food for, for 2,000, you have food for 4,000. There's no reason for anybody to be hungry. There is no reason for anybody to not have a home. There's no reason for people to not be able to get medical care if they're sick. There's no, no logical or legitimate reason for these things. In the nasr min Allah, you're only the agent through which Allah is sending to his people. And Allah Ta'ala has said and in the Quran, Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, if you believe. And these, you know Allah says, Ya ayyuha nas, we do fit in, everybody fits in that category. There's some that we say, well I'm not one of those, Ya ayyuha kafirun, I'm not one of those, inshallah. But when Allah says, Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, now he's speaking to a select group out of the whole humanity, so we need to perk up. Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu kunu ansar Allah. Be helpers of Allah. I was teaching a fifth grade class years ago um, in one of the Islamic schools and um, talking about, you know, being helpers of Allah. And the, the kids, Allah doesn't need any help. How can you help Allah? Allah, you know, is all powerful and everything. And it's like, yes, but, you know, He uses us to help His cause. So we can be helpers of Allah in this world. In fact, that's what we're supposed to be. That, uh, that comes from is when Asa is speaking to the Hawari, Hawariyun. And, um, you know, so we have, but Allah Ta'ala addresses this to the believers, to be helpers of Allah. So when we set out with the intention of improving the condition of the Ibad Allah, of the servants of Allah, we're not only developing the bir in ourselves and cultivating bir in ourselves, but we are actually obeying Allah Ta'ala. We are becoming who He said for us to be. Kunu be and Allah. Be this. We want to be obedient servants, inshallah. And we want to move into the fulfillment of our purpose here. And Allah Ta'ala has said, I only created you so that you would worship me. And the first thing in the worship of, of Allah Ta'ala is obedience, to obey the fact, the things that He has required of us. And He has required the giving. 
So that's the first thing, to develop our relationship with Allah. Second, know what we are striving for. We are living in a society in which the attention has been drawn to the individual and away from the communal. Everybody wants to serve themselves and their own wants and desires and pleasures. So this is our society and also our attention is drawn to the physical and away from the spiritual. This is not a proper society. The success of this society is measured by how much people spend. You've heard it, I'm sure, if you listen to the news or the economic reports. That's how they measure the success. And if, this, if the purchasing and acquisition of material things is high, then the people in the political and economic circles are happy. Oh, the society is doing well. That's how it's measured. But we're rated low in the world in the care of our children, in the education of our children, in the health care that we're giving, the housing. You can go to any city in this United States of America, big city, any major city, and find homeless people, and even some of the small ones. You would find homeless people. And it's not only here, man. I know, look, I had a friend whose husband worked for Aramco in Saudi Arabia, way back when Saudi was still, like, you know, top in terms of, like, the richest country in the world. She ended up almost having a nervous breakdown. She was Egyptian because of what she saw. They lived very well, but she saw people digging in trash bins for food. So it's not just here, but we live here.